So now we're going to look at our second case, our transverse magnetic case, which has parallel polarization. We're going to use again the equations derived on lecture 20, equations 1 and equation 3, which deal with the perpendicular and the parallel components of the electric part of the wave. Therefore, as we did before, we're going to decompose the electric part of the wave in two different sections, the parallel to the plane of incidence and the perpendicular to the plane of incidence. This one is the parallel and the perpendicular to the plane of incidence. We're going to use the angle of incidence in order to, to derive an equation with a cosine and sine terms. And we know that this angle is corresponding to this angle over here. Now, by, this, by using the angle over here, we know that the perpendicular components are going to be the sine terms, while the parallel components are going to be the cosine terms. And we can further see the sine, if it's either positive or negative, by seeing the direction of it. If we see the, the incoming wave, the electric part of it is on a, in an opposite direction, therefore the incoming one is going to be negative. Our reflective uh, wave is, good, is in a positive direction, and therefore it's going to be positive. And our transmitted wave here is in a negative direction, therefore it's going to be negative. As for here, they're all pointing in the same direction, which is uh, upwards, which is a positive direction. Therefore, this all are going to be positive. As I just mentioned, uh, this equation, the perpendicular part, is dealing with the sine terms. We can see that the reflective term is negative because it's opposite of the other two terms, the incoming and the transmitted one. In the other case here, we're dealing with the cosine, given it's parallel to the plane of incidence, and they're all positive. So now we're going to use equation 1 again. So if you notice from this step to this step, all we've done is move these two terms over to the denominator. However, now we have the ratio of index of refraction, which we got from doing the sine of the angle of the transmitted wave over the sine of the angle of the incoming wave and we got the ratio of the index of refraction. Right now what we want is to get beta here and in order to get it from this term right over here we have to use the definition of the index of refraction which is the n squared is the permittivity and permeability of the medium over the permittivity and permeability of free space. Uh, now notice that this index of refractions, both of them, are not squared. Uh, so in order to do this, we will have to multiply both the numerator, numerator and, the and the denominator by n1 and n2. So this, this term right here will look like this. Uh, by doing this now, we can sub in N1 and N2. By this, now the permittivity and permeability will have the respective 1 and 2, depending on what medium it is. And as you can notice, the permittivity and permeability of free space are going to cancel in the ratio itself. So this term... If you notice right here, the permittivities are going to cancel each other. And therefore, we arrive with our beta term again. Which is going to be multiplying the transmitted wave. So now we're looking at equation 3. Now if you recall, we're dealing with the parallel components. And if you also recall that the reflective angle is equal to the incident angle. Therefore, we are just dealing with the cosine of the incident angle and the cosine of the transmitted angle, because it's the parallel component. All we are doing in this case is moving this cosine term over to the denominator here, and we're getting alpha back. Now, just as before, we arrived on two equations, which depend on the incoming, the reflective, and the transmitted terms of the electric part of the electromagnetic wave, with alpha and beta in there. Now, as a quick side note, equation 1 could be derived from the equation 4. 
uh, just with uh, the case of parallel polarization. Now, in order to arrive to the first null equations, we have to do two things. We have to add these two equations, which will eliminate the reflective term, or we can subtract these two equations, which will eliminate the incident term. Now, I'm going to do the first one first, so I'm going to add these two terms, which is going to eliminate this, and it's going to give me two of the incoming term, and because we are adding, now we're going to get alpha plus beta and the transmitted term. What we want is to get something, the reflective and the transmitted term, depending on the incident uh, part. So we are going to divide both sides by this term right here. We're going to get 2 over alpha plus beta times the incoming part of the electric, uh, of the electric wave. And that's going to be equal the transmitted part of the electric wave. So I just rewrote the third Fresnel equation over here. And now to get the last one, we have to subtract these two terms. We're going to subtract this term uh, 1 from 3. So this term is going to become positive. So it's going to give me 2 in reflective. And now we are subtracting this from this. So we'll get alpha minus beta and our transmitted component. However, because we want the incident uh, part of the electric wave, we're going to have to sub in this, this term over, over here. So we're going to get the two are going to cancel. So we're going to get the reflective part of the wave is going to equal alpha minus beta over alpha plus beta times the incoming wave. This is our last Fresnel equation. This, are, this is our second pair of Fresnel equations. As you can see in the similar way, the transmitted wave is always in phase with the incident part of the wave. However, the reflective part of the wave is, uh, is <coughs> out of phase if beta is bigger than alpha. That would mean that this term is going to be negative and it will be in phase if alpha is bigger than, than beta, which would mean that this term is positive. Now, we can also explore Bruce's angle in this case. Again, we will see uh, when this term is going to be zero, which is exactly when alpha equals beta. Therefore, as you recall the definition of alpha, Now using the identity of the sine and cosine, we know that this is equal to 1 minus sine squared with the respective angles. Now we're going to use again the, the Snell's law, which we can relate the transmitted angle into the ratio of the index of refraction and the sine of the incoming wave. By using this and plugging it back into this equation now, we will get, and all of this is equal to beta. And now if we do beta squared, the square roots are going to cancel each other. Now after some rearrangement, we got into this final expression. Please note that the Brewster's angle is the angle in which the light is coming in and it's when there is no reflection. To summarize, these are the two pairs of Fresnel equations. The first for the transverse electric case, the second for the transverse magnetic case. The coefficients alpha and beta were...